This is Super Yacht News with the Sysman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, the video you're looking at here is of a Pershing 62 yacht which caught fire in the marina last week. Now, not an awful lot of information is known about the fire, but it was believed to have occurred in Casa de Campo Marina in the Dominican Republic. The fire is believed purely based on the video footage is to have started in the engine room. As you can see from, from this video footage here, the heavy black smoke appears to be coming from below deck to the rear of the yacht, which is where the engine room is situated. The yacht is moored in the marina at the time that the fire broke out, but was later towed out to the breakwater to prevent the fire spreading to other vessels, which is pretty standard procedure, if possible, in this situation. And the boat, which you can clearly see, is a total loss. Um, now, the Pershing yacht is an 18 meter or a 62 foot yacht. The, the model is no longer listed on the Pershing website, uh, but a used one can cost as much as two and a half million dollars. All right, so we'll move on to our main story now. And this is about um, Jeff Bezos and his new yachts, plural. Um, it, it would seem that he's already tired of his yachts being tracked on AIS websites as the yacht's position hasn't been updated in some time. Now, either that or the brand new yacht has developed a fault with her tracker, although this is, you know, extremely unlikely. Now, the 127 meter or 416 foot sailing yacht Koru was only delivered a few months ago to Mr. Bezos, the founder and former uh, CEO of Amazon. AIS tracker has not updated her position in over two months. Now, Koru last broadcast her position off the southwest coast of Sardinia, heading in a southeasterly direction. Uh, and we know the yacht has been at sea whilst the AAS has been non-functioning as it stopped broadcasting whilst underway. Now, we've had multiple sightings of the yacht in different countries over the two-month period whilst the AAS has been non-functioning. Uh, she was spotted in Castella Marina in Croatia in August. And these, interestingly, these photos were sent in by a chap called Paul Thurling, who even gave me some tips on how to pr pronounce the name of the place because I'm so awesome at saying names in other languages. Uh, Koru was last spotted whilst on her travels on the 11th of September in Banal Madana Marina in Spain. Um, and I say possibly because the photo was from very far away, but it does appear to be Koru from the sails and the blue hull, etc. Koru was the largest sailing yacht in the world when she was launched last year at 127 meters or 416 feet. Uh, yes, sailing yacht A is a larger yacht at 143 meters or 468 feet, but she is only a sail assisted yacht, so she's not a full uh, sailing yacht, whereas Koru is. Now, what do I mean by full sailing yacht? I mean, Koru can sail with her engines off, and sailing yacht A cannot. It needs engines. Um, to sail and it can only be assisted by his sails. Okay, so both Koru and Abiona, the support vessel, are now in La Ciota shipyard in France. Um, now you don't have to broadcast AIS in the shipyard or when alongside, but they've only been there for at least, well, at the most uh, two weeks, 15 days. Um, Abiona is having work carried out. However, it appears that Koru is just alongside and not having any work done, as you can see from the photos here. At least she's not being hauled out of the water. Now, Abiona is, uh, has also stopped broadcasting her position, but there could be legitimate reasons for that. Like I said, she's in the shipyard uh, and uh, you can switch to AIS off uh, for reasons you know, pertaining to work that's being carried out. However, it's still very rare, even in a shipyard, to switch off AIS, even when the yacht is hauled out of the water. Although it does sometimes happen, you know, depending on what kind of work is being carried out. AIS information is broadcast over VHF frequencies and as such is powered not only by 220 volts from the, the vessel's generators or shore power, but she also has a battery backup. All ships over 300 gross tons are required to broadcast AIS data whilst at sea or at anchor. And all VHF and emergency critical equipment runs from batteries as part of the GMDSS system, which means Global Maritime Distress and Safety System. Now, obviously, if a vessel gets into trouble, the first thing that may happen is a loss of power, right? So emergency equipment has to have a power backup in the event of that power failure. Now, 
In a shipyard, even when the boat is hauled out of the water, uh, they connect shore power to the vessel. So there's no reason for the AAS to be switched off unless there's very specific work being done to the bridge equipment that requires power on the bridge to be isolated. Anyway, it will be interesting to see if the yacht switches her trackers back on when she leaves the shipyard. All right, so we'll move on to our next story. This is about Moti Yacht Predator. Uh, this is a Russian-owned yacht and it has been advertised for sale. Now, it was built by the Dutch yacht Fedship in 2008 and is 72 meters long or 236 foot. It was just been put up for sale last week. Now, uh, it's believed to be owned by Iksandr Makhmadov, who was born in Uzbekistan. Now, his vessel used to be berthed almost always here in Imperia Marina, but after the invasion of Ukraine, the yacht went dark for a long period of time, and it later popped up in, shockingly, Turkey. Now, Makhmadov is the founder, shareholder, and former member of the board of directors of the Ural Mining and Metallurgical Company, the UMMC. Now, how does this uh, relate to the war in Russia? That company uh, cooperates with the Russian Mil uh, Ministry of Defense and the military industrial complex. A part of the UMMC supplies copper powders to the Chapovsky mechanical plant, which produces detonator capsules, pyrotechnic relays, detonating cords. Now, um, Mr. Makhmadov was sanctioned by the UK in September 2022, but he's just been sanctioned uh, last week on the 14th of September uh, 2023. Uh, even so, the yacht is being handled by a Monaco-based seller. The yacht is advertised with Alex Banning, of Super Yachts of Monaco, according to Boat International. What I'm going to be doing in, the, in this series of vlogs is recording the journey across the Atlantic. All right, guys, um, if you want to see a 10 part vlog filmed on board a yacht uh, I was on crossing the Atlantic and beyond, sign up to patreon.com slash esisman. You'll find behind the scenes videos and extras not published on YouTube, including extra videos filmed in Imperia in Italy just yesterday. We also recently made a video showing how we make the Super Yacht News videos, as well as the patron chat series and the patron only Q&A series. And you'll get early access to YouTube features advert free. And also be sure to check out our Super Yacht News channel. It's all the goodness of this, of these Super Yacht News videos chopped up into smaller sections so it's easier to digest. If you type at superyacht-news into YouTube, you will find the channel there. All right, guys, if you've got any information about any of these stories or any other stories, please be sure to get in touch the following ways. You can get us on the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, and on Threema. Be sure to like this video, very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.